So that's all the fingerboard cleaned up now. The edges are rolled a little bit. Um, and I've got to admit, I'm really pleased with the way it has turned out and pleased with the colour. So, the next stage now is I start putting all the hardware and electrics in. Make the nut, fit the machine heads. We're we ready to give it a, a bit of a setup then. We, we, we get in there now. The weight of the guitar is, oh, I'll have to weigh it at the very end for you, but the weight is lovely, the weight and the balance, I'm, I made up with it, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And it's always uh, in the back of my mind how well it's going to come out, or especially when I do things a little bit different, I've done this carved different to what I've done before, normally I put a flat edge on the bottom by it, but no, this is more of a, this is more of a taper really, you know, the, and more carving on by you. But um, it, it turned it well, you know, and I whizzed the router on the edge to give the fake binding. Well, that, that worked out well. So, I'm going to start fitting the pickups in the hardware now and then I can do the electrics then and see if it's it all lined and see if the bridge to line up with the because They haven't done that yet. But most, very often I'll fit the machine heads and drop the bridge in before I do the finishing. Um, I check everything's all in line. But I haven't done it with this guitar because everything has gone so well, I haven't had no problems. So I just don't, so don't want to say I was overconfident for shooting myself in the foot by now. I didn't, I didn't check it. I check it for alignment with a ruler, obviously, and off my centre line. But I haven't tried it with the bridge and the net and the machine heads. So, please, that. So, I'll see you in a little while now, anyway. So I'm just feeding the, the bridge ground wire in there now. It's a nice, it's a nice fit. Fits. And that looks okay. So this all I drilled up through the input jack. Turned it really well. You know, very often I'll shove a route up through underneath the cap. So I've got two tapered rings, the pickups, the pickups we use now are Simo Duncan and Bucker set. <coughs> so I've got a, a Jazz at the neck and a JB at the bridge. This is an SH4 and that's an SH2, They're like a match pair. Um, I've used them on other guitars similar to this. In fact, it's the main guitar I use. I love the pickups. Um, I'm a big fan of the of the, the all parts pickups, the razors. They they are absolutely awesome. Very very similar to these, a bit cheaper, but I had a real good deal on these, so I went for the old favourites. It's my Seymour Duncan's.
this thing that looks like a pen is a circuit board eraser and it's made up of um, it's made up of glass fiber rods and it's, it's, it's for cleaning connections or print the circuit boards before soldering it's this is really old one this is I've been I've been using this for 30 years um, you get new ads from but the key to soldering is heat and cleanliness if it's dirty you're in trouble and if I'm going to have heat you're in trouble but otherwise it takes everything should take straight away I like these uh, jack sockets as a replacement for the Telecaster better than the one with the fixing retaining spring at the back. Electro sockets I think they're called. They're great. Just push them through and line them up and job's done. So these are two little treble bead circuits. It's just a resistor in parallel with the capacitor. The resistor is reading out of the bands. I don't know if people are, people are into that and they understand what they are. You know, that's what I was brought up with. Rather than putting the meter on, we used to read them. That's uh, 150k. And the capacitor is 0 0.001 microfarad. The, the figures are not particularly accurate. You know, you can go, I have used them from anything from 100k, 130k, 150k. And these as 0 0.0023, one I've used them all. But I, I've, I've, I've had good, good results with these. And this, these makes, where well, I had these from RS, which is... Um, Reader spares many years ago when I still got a few left, so I thought I'd, I'd make them up. Now, I, know, I don't normally put them on them, but that's if I'm perf perf perfectly honest. But I've, I've got them here, and um, I thought I'd, I'd put them on anyway and see how it would perform. If there's no big, Im it, no, I wouldn't say improvement, that's the wrong word. If, if there's no big difference, I'll, I'll just cut them off and, and disconnect them. But um, they they may give me some sort of um, use anyway. So, I'm going to crack on over the rest of the way then. So I'm not quite sure if you could see that, how much cleaner that ground connection is to, to solder. Now this is my, t I love using this tool right, um, this is my take on it. The backs of these switches and the pots, they're pressed out and they're either cold pressed or they're pressed under pressure with a mixture of oil and water, which is uh, a mo which is a mold oil. Now, what happens is they can leave a residue on the surface. Now, you will solder up onto it, right? But I can feel that on air, and I can feel it sticky. Now, you can put your soldering iron on it, and after 
10-15 seconds the, the solder will start to run but I'm telling you you clean it now don't clean it with emery cloth or you know some people use wire wool that's okay but you have got a, a chance of shards of the wire wool going down inside the pot and shortening it out there is a chance of that with this is glass fiber it is bulletproof so this is what I'm going to use now for my coil tap this is going to be my torn pot and on the back of you now I've got a double pole double throw switch so what's going to happen is the finish of the south coil and the finish of the north coil of the bridge pickup which are white and red will go together and normally you tape them up um, when it's acting as an unbucker and the same with the bridge one but what I'm going to do now is that I'll put the centre point of the coils, the unbuckers on the middle terminals doesn't really matter which way they go the bridge one there and the neck one there so what happens to make a coil tap is when you pull this switch the, con the connections between the centre point and the bottom turn are short and that's the actual closing of the switch and what I've got now, I've got a little jumper across those shorten it to earth so effectively now these bottom terminals are ground and when you close the switch you ground these centre points of the, of the coils and short them out to earth and by doing that you short out one of the windings so you're left with in circuit only the the one half the coil and that's how the coil tap works roughly other people may have a different idea of how to explain it but that's effectively what's what's happening um, so the next thing now I'm gonna put the capacitor on on you I've got a 0 0.022 microfarad uh, that's going to be soldered up and then we'll just carry on then Um, I'll show a little close-up now. Right, so here's the two 500k volume pots. This little jumper here that I use for the for the earth in, this this 45 amp fuse wire it actually is, but um, it's a little bit heavier than what um, you I would normally use, but it, it turns out really good. There's the volume, ah, there's the tone with the coil tap, select the switch obviously. Here's the two little treble bleeds. These are 500k TCS pots. So, this there looks more wire in there, in there actually than there is. The reason being for that, I try not to cut anything off the pickup cables if I can. All the other cables are you know as short as they could possibly be to, not to make it too difficult to do um, just in case I change the pickups and put the pickups in a different guitar or, or if, if anybody else do if I, if the, I sold it which is highly unlikely but um, it's looking good looking good
get an X on it, is it? Like that? Right. No? Yeah. I want to do it. So, uh, nicely done. That one now. Right, that one here. Right, make sure you hit the thing now. Nice, on that one. Have a look at them now. Do they look okay? I'm scared. I think they look cool. Right. No? No, not yet. No? Yeah. So, next one? The next one? No? Yep, go. Come on, stop. Stop. Take them out there. Excuse. Oh, that's no good, ho. That's okay. Oh, I'll give that a one out of ten, and I'll give that one out of ten. Yeah, one out of ten. <laughs> one out of ten. That is much good as rubbish. Oh, I'll give it a two out of ten. That's still rubbish. A three out of ten. Oh, right, that's better. Go on then. So what I've decided to do is to make a bone net <coughs> for the guitar. Now this um, inexpensive plastic nut is a good is a good fit for it. So I tend to use these sometimes for sacrificial nuts. So it fits in there lovely. There's enough height on it. And, and the width, which is a little tiny bit over 5 mil. So, when you've got a blank neck like this, <coughs> a bit of bone, I don't know, you ain't going to see this on the camera, but sometimes you could buy them and it would be really nice if they were cut perfectly square to give you a chance, even on one even if it's only on the one side when you're making a, a nut if you've got an angle that's not 90 degrees it, it can be tricky so this blank one i've got here is absolutely miles out the top and bottom on the sides none of them are at 90 degrees so i'm not going to use that <coughs> this one's really good <coughs> but it's too thick So the first job to do is to thickness it the same size as this sacrificial nut. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. Now there's not a lot to take off it, but it doesn't matter if you've only got like a mill or half a mill to take off it, it's easy for you to knock it out the square. So I'm going to try and show you how I sometimes do it, I don't always do it like this, but um, it's a cheap and inexpensive way. So, there's a bit of flame maple, it's a cap that I had left over, in fact it's, a, it's the cap that I used to test the stains for that top. And that measures up <coughs> at 5.1 millimetres, 5.18, so that's okay. <coughs> so I'm going to use this as, as a gauge. In fact, I'm going to take this bone down to this thickness, and then I've only got a few thought to worry about, which I'll do by hand. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this up through the middle now, and then I'm going to stick it down to this old wardrobe door, and use it as a guide. One will hold this square. And two, it'll act as my depth stop. Oh, we'll give it a go and see how it'll come out. If it don't come out very well, you won't see this video. So, here we go anyway.
the nut is lovely and square. It's a really nice fit. It's a little bit tight as they push it all the way through. So what I'm just going to do now, I'm just going to whiz it across this block. that <coughs> is sitting in there lovely now it's perfectly square to the back of the fingerboard and the bottom of the nut slot so all I'm going to do now and take a little bit off the sides get the height and start shaping the back I'm going to get a pencil now and follow the radius of the frets in the fingerboard and start shaping the top so this little pencil cut in half I'm going to transfer the radius of the frets now onto the, to the nut. So I've got, I've put the line both sides actually now, so I got, I can see it either way, whatever I'm working on it. So I'm going to take a little bit of this waste off the top and start bringing the shape in. And then I will do it then in a a little vice of uh, nut making vice, which I'll show in a bit. on the back of this now this is where the benefits of having a, a nut vise because the jaws sit up high you can do it in a small vise because you've you've got no the angle to to work to I, I can put an angle on it as steep as that so it's it's a nice little investment for you to put into <coughs> Clean it up a little bit now. Take all the sharp edges off. Give it a fine. Give it a bit more of a polish. I'll mark the slots now soon as well. So it's coming nice. Uh, in the comments, let me know. I I, I just I'd be, I'd be interested to know what what grit other people goes down to when they make any nuts. I know. I know Glim from Boutique Bazaars in Wales and South East in South Wales, not far from me. Uh, and yeah, I've actually come up to visit me, so it's great. Uh, he makes awesome nuts. Absolutely awesome. Credit to him. I don't think he's got a YouTube channel, just uh, Instagram. But I have, I have finished this off now in 1200. But I don't normally go that low, to be honest with you. But uh, that's clean now, I'm trying in. Let's have a little look. Looks alright. Anyway, next thing cut the slots, truss or cover. I think I'm going to do, I've not seen anybody else do it on the internet, but um, I'm going to make a cover. With a bit of luck, that'll follow the shape of the headstock. If I can. So.
don't know whether everybody's going to like this or not, but here goes. Uh, to cut this out, it's a slightly unorthodox shape. So we'll go, see if you like it. So, what I've done is I've just put two strings on, two old strings, to see how everything's lining up. Center wise is, is brilliant, pick up's exactly where I want it to be, square. Sort my nut out first, get that somewhere nearby, and I see how the action is looking, just the height of it that I've got plenty of, plenty to work with. Right, I just put a little drop of glue underneath that and uh, these, these two strings are all in square normally, I put more strings on this, but I'm just seeing how the land is lying with it at the moment. Now, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this little clamp here, just a tiny bit of pressure. Just cork either side of the, the jaws. Ten minutes will be set enough. So all I'm doing by here now is on the, the bone nut is I'm not, I'm not really cutting the slots on the thing. I'm just polishing the slot from the tooling of the nut files. No doubt many of you have heard the guitar pinging when uh, you tune in the guitar up and that's the string catching in the in the nut nine times out of ten but a quick fix is to either check your your nut slot for the correct depth and width and but also polish it polish it so I use a bit of um, 600 there but I'm just going to give it a little whiz for the Bit of thousand grit, and that, and, that should, and that should be that should do it. I don't think there's any need to go any finer.
So I think the ad stock and the machine ads line up, turn up really well. They're all really straight. So I'm quite happy with that. A little bit of a miss if I'm honest with you. A lot of dust in there now from the file and the, the bone nut. But it's looking good. Give it a tune up now. Sort the intonation out. So that's it just about done. I'm uh, initial playing it, I'm really pleased with it. It feels really nice, the, the, the weight in the neck is great. I've got 9 to 42 strings on it at the moment. I've thoroughly enjoyed making it with our Oliver. It's an absolute pleasure to have your grandson with you in the workshop. Well, and, the, and the girls really. They're, they're hysterical. So it's just... These films are just a little bit about me. This just I'm just a normal bloke, Newton is in his garage building guitars, and I and I build guitars that I like. You know, it's like everything else you don't want one less for. You can do it two or two strats and go set up different or different colours or whatever. So this is why I make guitars. Very enjoyable. So I hope I've encouraged other people to, to have a little go. I try to do things as traditional as possible. I know I got my thickness sander and I got an half decent band, so it wasn't a particularly expensive band, so if I'm honest. It's a decent size one, but, but a lot of it's done by hand, all the neck is cut by hand neck joint, the yeah, neck angle. I try and do a series of um, films on some of the jigs that I use. Especially the neck angle because it's a piece of cake. It's, 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 it's absolute bulletproof and it's just a few pieces of 20mm MDF. I've used the same design for about 20 years. Well more than that actually but um, I've renewed it over the years you know because it, it may, may have wore out or whatever but um, That'd be nice I'm going to do a video on some electrics. So I hear lots of people talking about the electrics that um, they're not really sure what they're doing or whether they're doing it right or not. And even the big boys, they do it. Without saying no names. They can make a bit of an ash of it. Um, but I'll show you how I to do it. Um, I've been working with electric since 1973 when I was an apprentice electrical engineer. So, next thing for me to do now is to play it. Which a lot of luthiers on YouTube don't do. They don't, they make these guitars or from kits or whatever. They never play them after. They strum a couple of chords or whatever. So I'm going to 
try and knock a tune out. What it's going to be yet? I may write something. I did with uh, the last few videos, the Wild Turkey track and the single battle track. I may I may do something on long lines. Or I may play a but with this guitar I probably should play a Carlos Santana song. Some party or Black Magic Woman or something like that. I, I know I don't know yet, I just have to see how I feel. So it's bye for me and I thank you very much for watching and um, and I'll see you soon. Bye.